Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Microsoft's Group Vice President, Platforms, Jim Alchin. Hey Windowers and welcome to another episode of Windows on Windows, part of the series on the development of Windows Vista. In this episode we'll be taking a look at Windows Vista build 5219, a beta 2 branch build from the 13th of September 2005. This build of Vista was known as the first community technical preview build and was shared with developers at Microsoft's 2005 professional developers conference. The conference marked two years since build 4051 of what was then known as Windows Code Name Longhorn was shared at the 2003 conference. It's interesting to compare the features found in build 5219 with those features that were shown at the 2003 conference to see just how much the vision of Vista had changed by this point, into an arguably more focused but slimmed down release. We start our look at Windows Vista build 5219 with the help of Jim Alchin, speaking during his keynote at the 2005 Professional Developers Conference. Let's start. I stood here two years ago in this convention center as we were starting the journey for Windows Vista. Since then, we've released two versions of the Media Center, two versions of Tablet, we've released a 64-bit client, 64-bit servers, new versions of the server, a massive update of Windows XP SP2 for our customers, and we've shipped Windows Vista Beta 1. Now at that PDC, I talked about more transparency, and we have been following through in that. We gave you the bits in the early alpha stages of Longhorn, and that feedback was incredibly valuable to us. We've also been providing community tech previews, where we're trying to get the bits out to you so you can give us the feedback. We're gonna continue that today. We're gonna to be giving you an intermediate build between beta one and beta two. It's the build number 5219. It's a build that isn't beta two, and it's got lots of issues in it. Nevertheless, it shows our progress that, that we're making, and we're very proud of the way we're building the software today. We feel very confident about broad availability by the end of 2006. Now, why do we feel that confidence? We feel the confidence because we redid the way we were building Windows. During the last two years, we completely re-engineered engineering. It's given us more confidence to give out the community tech previews and to know that the bills are going to be of quality. And every day we're cranking out a new build. And it gives us the confidence to know that we're going to be able to hit the, the, end, of the end of the year. Now let's go deep. You, you can read this, right? Vista, as you can see from this diagram, is a very broad and deep system. We've got substantial innovation, hundreds of engineers, hundreds of features. Customer feedback has really helped us understand what's going on. As systems would get in trouble in the field, we'd get that information from Microsoft, and we also share that with you. For example, some of the information that we've gotten back has shown that some of the problems aren't our software or your software. It's actually hardware. So one of the things we're doing in the reliability space is we're adding hardware diagnostics as, along with hardware monitoring to the system. So if we start to smell something going on with memory, then we can do something about it. Or we start to smell that the disk is starting to have faults. We can do something about it. We're also reducing reboots, we believe at least by 50% in terms of configuration. Let me talk about security for just a minute. Here on the slide it's called user account protection. I think about it as just running a standard user. That is going to be the default in Windows Vista. Now we've corrected the Windows Vista system so that it can operate in a reasonable way running a standard user. On the performance side, well, let me just give you a demo of some performance stuff. So what I have here is a Windows Vista machine. And have you ever had a machine and it just seems to get slower over time? Well, we're trying to do something about it. The first thing is we're trying to automatically optimize the system so that you don't have to. I mean, why are users have to thinking about defragging and the disk and re-optimizing the, the way the blocks are on the disk? You don't have to with Windows Vista. It just is done automatically. That's the first thing we're doing. The second thing we're doing is doing some great innovation with something that we call Superfetch. 
Now what Superfetch does is it enhances the virtual memory system, which typically looks over things like uh, maybe seconds and minutes to decide the best usage of memory. What Superfetch does is look over minutes, days, hours, months, years, and it optimizes the system based on what, how that system has been used. And the best way to show this is I'm going to come here and I'm going to start a script. And this is without Superfetch running. This is just going to go through a set of applications and start them up. This is a 512 megabyte system. It's probably got half of the memory available for applications and data. And as you can see, this would be like a Windows XP machine that was cold booted. This is what you would expect. It takes a very long time for Outlook to start because it's also bringing in DLLs that are also used in some of the other Office applications. And it just sits and, and reads these in. Now, if you were to immediately restart this in XP, you'd get pretty good performance because the virtual memory system would immediately take advantage of the fact that those pages were there. But what if you rebooted? And it doesn't matter how long you waited, it would be the same cost of, of waiting through this whole, whole event sequence again. Or what if you went away for lunch and came back? Or what if you hibernated? In all those cases, the system was actually slowing down. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make the system cold again. Now I'm going to start Superfetch. And I'm going to bring up a monitor that I've got here. And I want you to just look at the green line here. And what's happening is this system is now prefetching all the programs and data that over a long period of time has been used on this machine and it's just bringing them into memory. And we will remember this coming back from Hibernate. We'll remember it on boot and the like. So if you don't touch your machine, it's sitting there optimizing it, getting it ready to do the things that you typically do, only do them faster. So if now if I run that same script, let's just see how the performance goes. I didn't even let Superfetch complete, but you can get an idea. This cool or what? So Superfetch works great if you have a reasonable amount of memory, and it looks fantastic if you have boatloads of memory. But what if you don't have boatloads of memory? Wonder what you would do then. Well, we thought about that. We said, you know. A lot of people have these USB memory sticks. I wonder if we could take advantage of those and make them part of the virtual memory system. I just plugged in this USB memory stick, any USB memory stick, and as soon as it recognized, we just got another 500 megs of memory on this machine. And as you can see, Superfetch is just taking advantage of all of it. Now you say, oh, well, what if you pull it out? Will I lose data? No, you won't, because we do write through. You say, oh, well, what if I pull it out? Can I bring it to another machine and somebody could steal my data? No, you can't, because we encrypt it. And we actually do 2x encryption, so even on fairly small keys, we can take advantage of it. We think this is a great innovation that will make Windows Vista get faster over time and make it more applicable even on a laptop where you may not be able to add the memory. I talked about standard user, and if you have standard user, you know that you can't hurt the operating system and you can't hurt another user, but you sure could hurt yourself. You could wander around and get some bad information, and it could perhaps damage the data on your machine. Well, what we really wanted to do is run certain processes in low integrity mode so they're actually sandboxed and protected from the rest of your data. And that's exactly what we did in Windows Vista. What I've got on this machine, is a, it's a Windows Vista machine running a VPC and I've got IE here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just start IE. And what I just did 
is I visited an awful evil website. And as you can see, it just downloaded a batch file and put it in my startup group. Now, if in fact there was a vulnerability in IE, this is a possibility. How about Vista? I'm going to bring up that startup group so you can also see it. I'm just going to go to that same web page. And if you notice down here, it says the create file failed. And in fact, the folder for the startup group is empty. Very simple demo. This is incredibly powerful because it's not just IE. So you can create sandboxes around processes so that they can be protected from the rest of your data. We think this is an incredible innovation. It means that even if we don't, as we all can't write perfect code, even if we don't capture all the vulnerabilities, IE is still protected. Your data is still protected. We think this is an incredible innovation. On first booting up this build, it's visually identical to the Beta 1 build of Vista. However, under the hood, there are many small changes. The first change I'll show you is in the About Windows dialog box. We now have this new Vista logo. Now this build of Vista also does include Aeroglass transparency. However, unfortunately, I've not been able to get this working in my virtual machine, even though I've tried using multiple methods. So what I'll do instead is I'll show you a few screenshots of the Aeroglass transparency in this build. And with that, a couple of the main new DWM features. So we have taskbar thumbnails, which are also stackable for grouped buttons. And we have the introduction of the Flip 3D feature, which was basically a new and more aesthetically pleasing way of using Alt-Tab. This feature was present up to and including Windows 7, but was removed in Windows 8. So back to my virtual machine. Now there are no start menu or taskbar changes that I've seen. The only one that I found was if you right click on the taskbar, a couple of the options have been renamed. So we now have show window stacked, show window side by side, Previously, these two options were called Tile Windows Vertically and Tile Windows Horizontally. Let's have a look at the display properties. So, as with the Beta 1 build, there are no XP themes. The default theme is called Aero. We have the same wallpaper. We have the same screensaver. And the same themes here, with all the classic themes still intact. Remember, eventually these would be discarded in Vista. Now interestingly, this build of Vista reintroduces the Windows sidebar which was last seen in pre-reset Longhorn builds. However, by default the sidebar functionality is not included, although it was downloadable separately. For the purposes of this video, I've downloaded it already, so all I need to do is just run it for you. And here is the default sidebar. So you have a small selection of gadgets, we have a clock, and you simply double click to add them. We have a search box, an RSS feed, and a slideshow gadget. Now Microsoft did specify at this point that they would be making available online downloadable gadgets in the future. So here are some basic options for the clock. There's only one style. For the search box, you can specify what search engine you'd like to use by default. And obviously, everyone would use Google. And the RSS feed, again, you'd put the URL in there. And your slideshow gadget, interestingly, doesn't have any properties you can set from here. I would have assumed there'd be an option to set the directory it pulls the pictures from, but that is apparently not an option. So I don't quite know where it gets them from, although I'm assuming it'll be from my pictures. So actually, oh, there are pictures in there. Okay. So therefore, you'd think it should be showing these. I don't quite know why it's not. Ah, is it this folder that it might be looking in? Let's just have a little go. Let's move these here and see if anything changes. Let's just put it back afresh. Yes, so it pulls pictures from the My Pictures folder, not from the My Pictures library location, which is slightly confusing. Uh, so the general sidebar properties, you can choose what side of the screen it's on, just like in Vista. And obviously you can add parts, but like I said earlier, there's only these four gadgets at the moment. And then you have your little taskbar icon where you can close it. And that's the sidebar.
And one final change to the user interface is if you hover over a taskbar icon down here, you get a new rounded balloon rather than the previous rectangular ones from XP. So diving a little further into this system, there are a few little oddities, shall we say, lying around. So if you go into program files, there's a new directory called Microsoft Windows Photo Library. And if you launch the executable, you have this new application called Windows Photo Library. Now, this application did make it into Vista, and the aim was that it would replace Windows Picture and Fax Viewer from XP. So as you can see here, it's called version 1.0.527.0. Uh, now, interestingly, uh, in case you don't know, um, in the Windows Essential suite of applications, there's an application called Windows Photo Gallery, which is very, very similar to this, albeit more advanced. So actually, this application, after its presence in Vista, appears to have morphed into Windows Photo Gallery. But basically, as you can see, it's just a way to catalogue your pictures. So if you right click, you get various options. So you can send it, you can print it, set it as your desktop wallpaper. Let's do that. Uh, rotate, go to the folder it's in, convert the file format. So you've got a few different options here. Resize, adjust the timestamp that you can just change by number of hours and so on and so forth. Uh, in fact, let's set that one as the wallpaper. That's a nicer picture. Okay, it's going to center it. Oh, thanks, Vista. That's nice. That's better. In fact, let's change the theme. Why not? There are so many videos on YouTube with the same builds in and they all look the same. So I'm going to make this one look a little bit different. Let's go for, I think that'll be a nice match. Yeah, why not? Now, another new program that's present in this build of Vista, and it is actually linked to from the start menu, is Windows Calendar, which again, made it into Vista, and it's just a very, very simple calendar application. Um, in line with that scene in Windows 1, to be honest, I mean, yeah, there's been an app like this since the beginning of Windows, but for whatever reason, it was removed for a, a long period of time, but now it's back uh, in Vista. I can't seem to actually add any events, which is slightly peculiar. I don't quite know what's going on there. What date is set on here? September 15th, yeah. So for some reason you can't add any events, but the, uh, the idea is there, which is nice. Uh, now, this Builder Vista also introduces a new service which is still present in Windows today, and that is the Superfetch service. And basically, its function is to, as it says here, it maintains and improves system performance over time. So basically, Windows tracks what programs you open the most often, and what it will do is it will preload them into memory so that when you load them, they will theoretically open faster. Tying into the system maintenance service, the idea was, which also made it to Vista, was that you could put in a USB stick and use the USB stick to improve system performance by using it as a sort of extra paging file, basically. Now lastly, on the program front, there is a new version of Media Center included in this build, and here it is. So I'll just show you really quickly. And I'm not going to spend too much time showing you because it's really slow. Now, in this Builder Vista, the Safe Docs Backup and Restore program has also been updated. But what I'm going to do to show you another feature is I'm going to open it this way. So, Windows, System32, SDCLT, right click. If you click Run Elevated, just to show you what the user account control prompt looks like in this build, it looks like this. So this program needs your permission. I want to complete this action. I do not want to complete this action. So obviously I do want to, so here it is. Now the main differences in this version of Safe Docs is that you can now choose which specific types of file and which location to back up to. So if we click change my automatic backup settings, you can choose the frequency and the time like you could previously. 
But now additionally, you can also choose where it's going to be backed up to. So you can back up to a removable media, to local disks if you have more than one installed, or to a shared folder on another computer. You can also then choose which types of files from your documents you want backed up. So it will always back up your documents and other files. And you don't have an option to uncheck that, but for music, pictures and videos, you do. And if you do uncheck any of the options, you have this little you have this little disclaimer at the bottom and it says important any file types that are not checked will not be on your backup and will not be protected you also have a link to calculate the size of the data but it doesn't appear to work and then if you click finish it starts your backup now if we go back to the start menu and to the games folder there are three new games present in this Builder Vista and these are Chess, Purple Place and Shanghai. These are all beta versions of the games and they did all make it into Vista except that Shanghai was called Mahjong. I'm not going to load them because they're really slow and to be honest they look pretty much identical to the final version so there's not really much point anyway. If you click on Parental Controls from Game Explorer the Parental Controls have been updated slightly. So if you click on a limited account, rather than all the settings being on one page like they were previously, everything's now been sort of shoved off into sections to make the interface look a little bit cleaner. So if you click on settings here, rather than all of this being on one page, you don't have to actually click on links to get to the options here. But the options themselves are all the same. Now other than that, these are the only main changes I've seen in this build, which is not really that many. However, as always, if you've used this build yourself and you know of any other changes or additions or indeed removals that I've not managed to find, then please do let me know in the comments and I'll be really interested to know if there is anything. Specifically, if you've used this build and you have any evidence of WinFS included, please let me know because I read online in multiple places that apparently WinFS was found in this build. However, by this point in Vista's development, Microsoft had already stated that WinFS wouldn't be completed by the time Vista was ready, and it would be released as a downloadable add-on later on. However, like I say, apparently WinFS is in this build somewhere, but I can't find it. I can't find a service for it, I can't find any files for it. So again, if you've used this build and you've seen it, or you've seen any evidence for it yourself, please do let me know. And again, as usual, if there is any other information that comes to light after the recording of this video, I will add it to the video using cards. However, in the meantime, thank you very much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. Like the video if you did indeed like it. And I will see you next time.